Hi, this is Deborah at the Labyrinth, and I'm so excited today. We're doing an opening of a new deck, and I was really jumping up and down. I took one for myself, you know, because I collect cards. This is the Wikipedia spell deck. And it says it's a compendium of 100 spells and rituals for the modern day witch. Ooh, let's see what they got in here. It's by Sean Robbins, Liana Greenawa, and Charity Bettle. But well, let's see what it says on the back. Empower your life with magic every day. With 100 key spells and rituals, this accessible, beautiful deck has everything you need at your fingertips to cast spells positively, underline, underline, for better results. Whether you practice lightly and cast the occasional spell here or there, or immerse yourself completely, you'll find the perfect spell in one of these 10 popular categories. Love, protection, cleansing and purifying, healing, self-care, family, money and career, spirituality, pets and nature, and the Sabbaths. It includes a hundred card spell deck and a booklet covering the basics on how to use the cards, cast a spell, prepare a modern day witch's toolkit, and practice moon phase magic. Each card features stunning artwork on the front and simple instructions for a spell or ritual on the back. Now this deck here, the Wikipedia, there's also a book called the Wikipedia. This is like a jump off from that. So let's get into it and see. Oh, it's got nice pretty stars on the side. It's in a nice uh, hard box that closes from the top. And I'll show you once I get it open. I've been real excited. I couldn't wait to open this. So my cameraman came today. We were filming something else. I said, ooh, let's do that because this is exciting. And this just, oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, it's got stars and moons on the inside. I think that's kind of cool. And this is what it looks like on the inside here on this side of it. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, oh it's got dragonflies here and flowers and green things. We got green things in the, in the box. Dragonflies and flowers, wildflowers. It's kind of cool. Oh, this is the little booklet. And these are the cards. So let's take a look at the little booklet first. Oh, it opens up like this. Isn't that something? It shows you how to use it. And the first thing it says, these words the Wiccan read fulfill and ye harm none, do what ye will. That means don't do anything bad. Don't do anything against someone's will. It shows here the moon phases, which I think is very helpful because when you're casting spells, you want to do it according to the moon phase. They have the waxing phase, the full phase, the waning, and the new. Uh, they talk about casting a circle or creating sacred space. And then also when you pull up the circle. And they talk about candles, crystals, and things like that. And then the toolkit, it talks about the altar, candles that you're going to use, preparing candles for spells, and also color correspondences, and also salt, the pentacle, and crystals. It has, it's a good starter set, I would say, for the beginning witch and for somebody that is just starting out with Wicca. Also here, it has the nine most common magic crystals, and about the sun and the moon, empowering your crystals, moon phases for magic. It's got a lot of good information here, and uh, I would tell you if it was crap, but so far, it's not crap. I'm pretty surprised for people to make, you know, churn this out and it be something decent. Now let's take a look at the cards. Now the backs of the cards, there's a lot of green trees and it has the pentagram, you know, an embossed, nice design pentagram. Let's go with pets and nature. I miss my, my doggy today. So I'm just going to pull one. Let's see what it says. Heal a sick pet. Oh, I hope my baby's not sick. Heal a sick pet. Before casting the spell, make sure you visit your vet. He just went. Materials. Small tumbled amethyst, a small tumbled rose quartz, a knife, and a yellow candle. Hmm. Focus on the stones. Believe wholeheartedly that they'll alleviate your pet's symptoms. If you know what the illness is, use the knife to inscribe your candle with the name of the illness and the word banish. I would not use a knife to do it on candle. You, you could use a pin or you could use a paper clip. You don't want to use a knife. You don't want to go too deep because then you'll score the candle and then it will drip funny. It will melt funny. Or you might break it. Or you might cut yourself. Don't use a knife. Use something else. Wait until your pet is sleeping or resting and sit in front of them. Light the candle nearby. 
Take a stone in each hand and circle the stones clockwise over your pet's body. Your pet may show a little movement, but continue on with this healing for 10 minutes. When your pet is calm, recite these words. I would just modify this a tiny bit because that seems like a lot of work to me. And you might startle your pet 10 minutes. You know how long that is? Ten, when you're doing magic, 10 minutes. Now, I would shorten that actually to only once if I was going to do that. Just saying. These are the words, though, that you're going to say. I summon the angel Ariel, the healer of animals, to bring forth your power and heal my pet. Remove all pain and suffering from my beautiful companion and circle them in your luminous light. Then repeat the following three times. With magic I banish all illness and pain. Let my pet be well again. Wrap their body in restorative rays. Heal their pain. Do not delay. Place the stone somewhere near your pet's bed. No, don't do that. I don't know about your dogs, okay? I've had dogs that ate socks. I had dogs that ate tree bark. Don't put the stones by the dog. Put it somewhere else. Put it on your altar. The spell here that they have repeating three times, I will give them kudos for that. I will. The rest of it, nah. But the spell itself, it seems pretty good. What I'm gathering from this deck is they like a lot of pomp and circumstance for people that, ooh, I'm a witch. Well, when you're like, ooh, I'm a witch for 30 or 40 years, you're like, I don't need that. I just do it simple. I don't need all that pomp and circumstance. But you know what? If it's something that you really want to do, go ahead, knock yourself out. Let's try another one. Let's try one for spirituality. Ah, now, this is good. I just did a video on gods and goddesses. Wow, spirit's going, hello. This is to connect with a goddess, a guide, or an angel. Good one. Let's see what it says. Try to connect with your own personal spirit helper while meditating. You can substitute selenite or gypsum, angelite or celestite or celestine for the stones listed below. You ain't gonna, that's why they told you to look at these instead of these, because you ain't gonna find these that I'm gonna list. These are the stones they want you to use. Gashonite, never heard of it. And I've been dealing with stones for 40 years. Titanium quartz crystal, yeah, possibly. A few sprigs of mint, fresh or dried. One eucalyptus mint combination incense stick. Good luck finding that one, people. I have never in all my days seen a eucalyptus mint combination incense stick. Nor would I want to smell it. You ever smell eucalyptus? Ugh. Anyway, you could get the oil maybe and anoint a candle with it, which is what I would do. Simple, quick, easy. Use the oil, anoint the candle. It says here, place the mint and incense beside your bed, light the incense and lay on the bed, holding your chosen crystal in your left hand. Close your eyes and inhale for three seconds and exhale for three seconds. Repeat for five minutes. While doing this, focus on how the stones feel in your hand and try to look out of your third eye chakra. If there's anything you want to speak to your guide about, now is the time. If your body feels floaty, that's normal. Don't worry if you fall asleep once the incense is out. Guides often communicate with you when you're asleep. Keep the crystal on your nightstand and pay attention to how you're feeling over the next few days. Spirits often speak to you through your subconscious, so you might be inspired and try something new. This meditation can help your angels and guides set you on your destined path. Now, I'm not knocking this deck. I'm just saying I would do things a little different, okay? I, I don't know if this is just placed towards beginners, but to me, it's got a lot of stuff around it instead of the meat. What I would do with this, I would not use these stones, first of all. No. I wouldn't use stones. I would light a candle, and I would light a white candle. If I wanted to anoint it, I would anoint it with frankincense and myrrh, and I would use a frankincense and myrrh, or both, one frankincense, one myrrh, or together, or even just a frankincense incense. You never want to leave anything burning when you're laying on a bed, unless it's in a big bowl, and you got a bunch of sand or salt in it, and you put a little cone in the middle. That's the only time I would leave anything burning while you're laying down with your eyes closed. You really don't want anything burning. And the candle I would light later while I'm awake. I would not light the candle now. It would anoint it. Then, yes, I would lay on the bed and I would throw a question up and wait. But, uh, I don't know. It says here, try to look out of your third eye chakra. No, when you're connecting with spirit, when you're connecting with guides or angels or the source of creation or a god and a goddess, 
you want to shoot it out the, the crown chakra because the crown chakra is the one that sends information out or energy and that's where it comes back in. It doesn't come into your third eye. Your third eye is for intuition. Your third eye is to find out stuff through that sense other than the five senses. That's really what intuition is. It's not connecting to your spirit guide. Now to decipher something from a spirit guide or an angel or a god or goddess, you might use your intuition for that, but you're not going to use your intuition to connect. So I got a little bit of difference with that. But you could do it this way if you wanted to, see how it works. Let me know. I'm very interested in letting you know. Let's do one more. You know what? I'm thrilled. It's half and half with me because I like to do things very simple. I really do. Let's do one for, let's do one for healing. All right. Again, they pick a crystal you're never going to find. What the hell? If you were to get, don't get me started on that. These are specimens they're listing, not regular run-of-the-mill everyday crystals you could use. Anyway, this is for general healing. Healing spells are used to help heal on a spiritual and energetic level. Most crystals have energy healing properties, but many are focused on specific ailments. Cuprite is an excellent overall healing crystal, which is also believed that the color yellow is all healing, so it's commonly used in crystal craft for energy healing. Stop right there, okay? I have to tell you, no. Yellow is not for healing, no. If you research color correspondences, it's blue. Blue is healing. Blue relates to the West, to water, emotion, psychism, dreams, things to come, the healing angel of Gabriel. Uh, it's not yellow. Anyway, cuprite, no. I would not use that either. If I could find it, if I could find it, and seven yellow candles, that's a lot of yellow candles. Set up your altar, place the crystal in the middle, position the seven candles around the outside of the crystal, and light them. Say the spell below seven times. Being raised in a magical household, I was told that spells are done in rounds of three, six, or nine. Not seven. Seven's a lucky number, though, but you wouldn't repeat it seven. I've never seen a spell with seven. It's always nine, three, six, and I've done them that way. Anyway, ailments will vanish. In good health, I'll be. Banish my illness. Let me be free. Now, that I have to say one thing about these cards. The spells that they're giving you, the rhymes, are dead on. Dead on. A witch wrote those. That she did. And made it simple, like I would. Very simple. Kudos to the spells. But the other stuff around it, I don't know, I'm questioning that. If you are performing the ritual for someone else, place a photograph of the person next to the crystal on your altar and change the words. According to the following, being sure you say it seven times. Ailments will vanish in good health they'll be banish this illness, let them be free. Everything on the altar must remain untouched until the candles have burned down. The person who is sick must keep the crystal in the living room of their home and carry it when out and about. No. I would modify this. Sorry, uh, these people, what are their people's names? Sean Robbins, Liana Greenawa, and Charity Bettle. Your stuff around the spells really sucks as far as I'm concerned, but the spells itself are pretty good. I would modify it. And what I would do is I would use a citrine uh, crystal if I was going to use any. Citrine is for personal power. Uh, you could also use a black crystal for banishing. Depends on your mood. But I would not light seven candles and it would not be yellow. I wouldn't light a candle at all. If they're saying you're going to do a spell for someone else to have them be well or get rid of an ailment, I'd make a pop it. I'd make it blue. I'd stuff it with healing herbs. I get their photograph and shove it on the face. Now you got something to work with. Then maybe I might light a candle and say a few words. See? This seven candles and yellow, I don't get that. Unless you're going to write on the yellow candles healing and then imagine them blue, you could do that. But you don't need seven. I don't understand that. Maybe they sell candles at this company. I don't know. Let's do another one. We did spirituality. We did... Uh, what else do we do? Animals, right? Oh, let's do a protection one. Let's do this last one, okay? Because I'm getting fed up with this. I find it, you know what I would use this for, honestly, and I'm being honest. 
Oh, and these people didn't pay me. You know that. The spells itself are good, but I would research the stuff around it because that's just correspondences. And when you're dealing with correspondences, you want to correspond to whatever the work is. So you want to start with the work and you want to branch out. What is the color associated with that? What is the stone associated with that? Right? That's where you want to go. I would not take these to heart as far as correspondences because I think they suck. Although the little booklet that tells you about the moons and stuff, and let's see what it says in here on the colors because I'm just curious because they had, I saw color correspondences on here. Oh, isn't that convenient? Oh, here we go. At first I didn't see yellow. They have silver and blue together. No, no. They have red. No. I want to read these to you and I'll tell you the right ones, okay? And you can research me. Okay, research me, because I know I'm right about this. They have white, anything at all. They're correct on that. Brown and black. No. They have banishing evil, stopping harassment, or bullying. No. Black is for banishing, brown is for the home. And stopping smoking. What is wrong with these people? Uh, then we have green, managing wealth and money. Uh, that's prosperity. Not managing what you got. What if you ain't got nothing? What if you only got $2? It's not managing your $2. It want, you want your $2 to grow into a pile, right? Growth and prosperity is green. Nature, garden spells, success and achievement. Yes. Pink, encouraging romance and attracting love. Correct. Purple, general protection. No. Purple is for spirituality and intuition. Wisdom. That's the correspondence for purple. Red, confidence and courage, no. Red is for passion, transformation, and cleansing, and strength. It's your will. That's your will. Uh, silver and blue they have together, increasing psychic abilities, home and family, women, pregnancy, motherhood. Silver is motherhood. Healing is blue. They got them mushed together. I don't know why. And then they have three mushed together, gold, orange, and yellow. I got healing here for yellow. Self-confidence, yes, that's yellow. Fatherhood, no. Communication, yes. Education, no, that's green. Finding lost property, um, I don't know where they got that from. I think they made it up. And writing skills, yes, that would fall under that. Research your correspondences, please, before, don't take this to heart. It's not right, I hate to say it. Prove me wrong, people. Go look it up on 20 gazillion websites. Look it up in books if you got them. And then let me know if I'm wrong, because I know I'm not. Because I've been doing this all my life. Anyway, let's do one more. I am finding this entertaining. I would go to these for the spells. I will tell you that. Like, say I'm being real lazy, and I go, oh, let me do a spell for protection. Let me see what they got. Protection. Oh, this is to end a curse. This should be funny. If it's going any way those are, you know how I feel about that. And a curse. If you have had a run of bad luck or feel out of sorts, someone may have inadvertently infected you with the evil eye by radiating hateful thoughts about you. Disregard that, people, okay? People don't... I could do another, another whole video on spells and curses and stuff because people, when they're having bad luck or by their own stupid choices meet a wall, brick wall, they go, oh, someone put a curse on me. No. However, if you feel someone put a curse on you, you just draw the negativity to yourself. So maybe this would be helpful to you. Anyway, I don't like the way they have it there, end a curse. Anyway, it says here, this spell can help. It's crucial that you stay neutral when spell casting. How do you, when you do a spell, you have to have emotion. What do you mean neutral? Disregard that. You want to be livid, pissed off. You want to have that energy as high as it can go before you let it out. What's wrong with these people? Who's not the witch that wrote this? Uh, it says here, if you unintentionally direct negativity towards someone highly protected, the energy could bounce off them and come straight back to you. Maybe. I'm not going to discount it. I wouldn't discount it. But if you're whipping out energy like that, I think that you might know that if they're protected, would you not? 
I would think you would. Again, I don't think a witch wrote that. Let's see what kind of materials you need. A cup of black salt powder, okay? A plate, an onyx stone, a knife. I think these people were watching the craft or something because all these, all these movies show witches running around with knives, cutting people and shit. You know, we don't cut anyone with a knife. We don't. And if it's your ritual knife, it would say ritual knife, right? Really, it would be your utility knife, not your one that you channel the energy with. You have two knives on your altar. A utility knife. Here they have a paring knife. No. Long white taper candle. I would use a black candle, personally. I wouldn't use a white candle. I'd use a black candle, because I want to get rid of that. I'd blast that right out of the way. Okay, ritual. In the morning, construct a gap-free circle of salt on the plate. Place the crystal in the center. With the knife, carefully carve away the wax on the flat end of the candle to expose the wick. Hold the candle over the top of the plate and light each end. Repeat this spell seven times. This person has a thing with seven times. Again, don't do it. However, the spell that they're talking about is really a very old spell, except they screwed it up. I hate to say it. There are things called double action reversible candles. And I don't know if you guys ever watched Once Upon a Time. If you did, there's a scene in there where the shopkeeper takes a double ended reversible candle, puts it in a stand, and the stand is a iron or metal, and then it has a U shape at the top, and the candle will sit sideways in that. Both ends are lit. One is black and one is white. What that does, and you, you can get them straight up and down in a glass container, and they usually have black in the bottom and a different color on the top, or black on the top and a different color on the bottom. What the black is for is to get rid of any impediment to the energy you're going to send next of what you want to call to yourself. It's like a rotor rooter. You're getting rid of, you, you're blazing a path, okay, and then you're going to call in something by sending out the second one. It's like, get out of here and then come here. That's what those candles are for. I think that's what they're trying to do here. But again, if I were to do this at home and I didn't have a double ended reversible candle, I would use one black candle and one white candle. And what I would do is I would light the black candle first, say the words as to blast this crap out of my way. Whatever it may be, I don't care who it's from, just let's get rid of it, okay? And then I would take the white candle, light that white candle right after that, after I say those words, I would call in positive energy to take the place of what I'm getting rid of. See, I think that's what they're trying to do. So that's what I would do is I would do a black candle and a white candle. I wouldn't even do the whole salt thing on a plate. That's a whole nother spell. This is what they say for the ritual. You're gonna say it seven times after you do all that. Hold the candle over the plate and light each end. Repeat the spell seven times. This candle burns from end to end, all negative vibes I avoid. That doesn't rhyme. With this vessel I defend, this curse is smashed and now destroyed. It sounds like a witch did not write that. Maybe a witch wrote it and then it was proved by someone that wasn't and they changed the word because this candle burns from end to end, all negative vibes I avoid. Um, no. I would, I would put a different word in there. I would want it to rhyme for sure. What the hell, you know? I would do something like, as this candle burns to the center, negativity now, I return to sender. Some bullshit like that. Just get rid of it, send it back. Wherever it came from, just get rid of it. You don't wanna send it out to anyone else. You don't wanna send it anywhere. Send it back to whoever sent it to you. Just get rid of it. Let them suck that back in. It's their bullshit anyway. Blow out the bottom end of the candle and push it onto the center of the plate. Make sure you don't have anything anywhere to be because the candle will burn all day until it puffs out. Puffs out? What country are these from? Puffs out. It says New York, but puffs out? That's not an American saying, is it? I don't think so. Who would say burn out, go out, right? Don't say puff. Who says puff? Does England say puff? I don't know. Uh, when it's burned down, take the uh, protective salt and sprinkle it outside your front door. Whenever you do a spell, you do not get rid of the bullshit that you just did on your property. No. You get rid of it. You throw it in the garbage, you burn it up till there's nothing left, or you bury it, 
off-site. You don't really keep a lot of your stuff unless you're making a powder or an oil or something like that. Keep the onyx inside the house for two weeks. I don't know why they're doing that. Because the spell, the words that it said, did not say take that negative and let it be sucked up into the stone. And they didn't use the stone as, oh, protect me against stuff. So those words weren't said. Whatever words are said, that's the intent. And if you've got these tools and you're incorporating them, then you would have to say something about those tools, about what they're doing for you in this spell. I I'm sorry, people. I don't mean to pick apart your spells, but I'd use this as a starting point, actually, and then do my research. They are very interesting. I think that if I would, like I said, if I was lazy, cleansing and purifying. This one sounds decent. We had three crappy ones. This one is cleansing your spirit. Aromatherapy helps you reconnect with Mother Earth. This ritual bath will help you spiritually purify and cleanse your spirit. So far, so good. Materials. A tablespoon of dried peppermint, dried spearmint. Good. Five drops of lemon oil. Good. Five drops ain't going to kill you in the tub. Otherwise, don't use citrus a lot of it in the tub. You'll be raw. Uh, let's see. Five drops of lemon balm essential oil. That's okay. And four ounces of Epsom salt. Okay, they got a star so far on this one. Oh, you don't have to say something seven times. That's why. The ritual is, if you have a tub, fill it with warm to hot water and sprinkle all the ingredients in. If you do not have a tub, you can simply sit or stand in the shower stall and fill a water basin with the ingredients. Good. Take the basin with the aromatherapic water and pour it over you from top to bottom to remove something or splash your feet to your crown to bring something to you. I just dump it on my head. I wouldn't do the splashing thing, especially in the shower and you're naked and you got a bucket of water there. No, I just dump it. That's if you don't have a tub. As you soak or pour or splash, say a prayer or petition of your choice to empower the bath or shower with the essence of spirit and to activate the spiritual essence within the herbs and oils. Well, this is putting the cart before the horse, I think. Or actually putting the horse in the barn and letting the cart just sit there. Whenever you're doing a cleansing or an infusing of yourself, whatever materials you're putting in the water, you're charging that water with those vibrations from those herbs or oils. So as you put them in, you're going to be saying words as, okay, the lemon is to get rid of negativity or not have negativity stick to me so that I can become more spiritual. And then what else we got here? Then we got uh, peppermint and spearmint. This is for clarity of mind so that I, when I receive a message from spirit, I'll know what the heck it is. Right. And so on with each thing. Then you're going to stir it three times around. You're going to pull down the energy from above the go light. And you're going to stir it three times around, and in your mind's eye, you're going to see that water gold. Now it has been charged with energy from spirit. Then you'd pour it on you and say the words of, okay, I'm going to take this in now. I'm going to use this. Now it is so. Now I'm making it so by doing this. And you can make it rhyme. They're half right on this one. All the materials are right, and it's half right on the procedure. As far as putting it in a bucket or a basin or a pitcher, I tell people put it in a pitcher, a big pitcher. If you're in the shower, you're all nice, wet, and warm, and I just reach over and grab that, dump it on you. These are the words you got to say. That's what I would do. And make sure you ground, connect, and protect. It says here, uh, and to activate the essence while you're laying there, you're going to charge the water with the intent so that when you get in, it's automatically going to happen. See, by you getting in there, is getting on you and now it is done that's it so it, you know i i think that i wouldn't throw them away i'm not that pissed off at them i think i will keep them i won't give them away it's interesting to see the materials that other people use and it's interesting to see how they're trying to get the point across to people especially that don't know anything about spells i would not be surprised if people use this and didn't get the results just saying but maybe you can modify them or go with your intuition on what materials to use and what to say. You can use this as a starting point, and that's what I would do. 
You don't want to just take someone else. It's not like a recipe. Oh, just say these words and pick up this rock and now you're going to hit the lottery or you're going to get that job. It doesn't work like that. You have to make it personal and you have to send emotion in there and you have to send your visualization in there and you got to send energy in there and already seeing it happen. So I would use this as a good starting point and then make it my own because now it's going to be personal because someone else's spell to them, they might connect with that. The people that wrote this, I guess, did, maybe. I mean, this is a lot of cards. There, there's a hundred cards here. They had to come up with a hundred ideas. I'm sure by the end of day four, when they were all sitting there saying, what the fuck can we write about this one? Okay, because there's like 20 or 10 in each category. I'm sure they were just going, ah, just put that in, because I know that's what I would do, okay? And what a lot of people would do, because you're tired of doing and saying the same thing over and over and over. But I would use them as a starting point. They're a good starting point when you've got nothing in your head to go with spells and you're not used to doing spells. Let me know what you think about this deck and give me a call here at the store if you have any questions. Uh, and also hit the like and hit the subscribe and also uh, look at the other uh, platforms that are available down below. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon.